Hi, it's Mountain Mom from MountainMomandTots.com here. I am going live this morning to talk about my Thankful for Nature challenge. At MountainMomandTots.com slash Thankful for Nature, you can sign up to be part of the Thankful for Nature challenge. It's been going on for the whole month of November. And if you post something for the Thankful for Nature challenge before the 30th of November, you could win. You could have a 1 in 50 chance of winning a set of lovely hats from Chaos headwear and a set of merino wool underlayers from Love Mother. These are lightweight merino wool. They keep your kids really warm in the winter and are great for hiking and outdoor activities, which is why I'm so excited that both these companies have sponsored the Thankful for Nature Challenge. If you're watching this and it's after November 2017, you can still sign up for the Thankful for Nature Challenge at mountainmomandtots.com slash thankful for nature. You'll get a free ebook in your inbox of our My Family's National Park to Park Highway Journey. It's a photo ebook about our travels last summer. You'll also get some inspiration on showing gratitude for nature. Today, as a final Facebook Live in this Thankful for Nature Challenge, I wanted to share some of my family's favorite plants and animals, four favorite plants and animals that I have gotten to know more about thanks to this book, Jake's Nature Guide, Rocky Mountains. I have a book review about this book on my blog right now. So Mark Dannenhauer, the author of this book, emailed me and asked if I would review it. And I thought, yeah, sure, I live in the Rocky Mountains. I have been so happy to learn a little bit more about the plants and animals that live around me. Why? Because when I am outdoors and I know about my surroundings, it's like meeting a new friend. It's like being able to say, oh, remember that? That's the kind of tree that we saw on our last trip. It's an Engelmann spruce. Uh, being able to give a name to some of those plants and animals that we enjoy in the outdoors has been really powerful for me and my kids. It helps us to have a connection to a place. It helps us to really learn more about the natural life around us, and it's fun. So. I asked Mark Dannenhauer to share some of his favorites in a video on my website, mountainmomandtots.com, but I also wanted to share four of my favorite plants and animals with you today as a final hoorah for my Thankful for Nature challenge. So here we go. The first one I wanted to share was a tree. This book goes through many different kinds of wildlife. Um, fungi, trees, wildflowers, non-flowering plants, mammals, birds, insects, fish, amphibians, reptiles, and even rocks. I know those aren't living, but it's really a nice brief overview, great for kids, where you can learn about the outdoors in a very easily to digest way. So the first tree I wanted to talk about is a Rocky Mountain Maple. If you see this tree right by us, or all these trees around us, those are Rocky Mountain maple trees. And the reason I love these trees is not only because they're here at my house, I love the shade they give in the, in the not, I was about to say winter, but that wouldn't make any sense. I love the shade that they give in the summer. I love how beautiful they get in the fall. I mean, there's a whole range of reds and golds and oranges and browns and just beautiful colors in the fall. And my kids love the little seed, pod, seed pods, they're called Samaras, that fall. I was hoping to find some, but I have, I think that they have been taken. I'll show you a picture. They're called Samaras officially, but my kids like to call them whirly giggles. They look kind of like this. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and you can throw them up in the air and they spin on their way down. It's that, that's one way that the Rocky Mountain maple tree can disseminate their seeds and grow more maple trees is the wind will catch and carry those Samaras and, and bring them to all sorts of the edges of the, of the environment. And it's really fun to play with those. And these trees are awesome because they're really just beautiful in the fall. I love it. So that was my number one thing. My second choice, these are ones that I chose and I'll get to the ones my kids chose in a minute. My number two plant that I love in the, in the outdoors are aster wildflowers. They look like this. They're little purple flowers that are 
uh, late bloomers, so you'll see them throughout the summer and even into October. And it's great because it offers a pollinating source for butterflies and bees and other insect life around us. Um, and I see them everywhere. They're these beautiful, um, kind of a bush, and the little, the purple flowers bloom all the warm season long. And they're like little friends. When I go on hikes or I see them growing, I can say, hey, those are aster flowers. I know what those are now, thanks to this book. I didn't know what they were called before. I just saw them as purple flowers. Now that I have a name for those, I'm able to remember them. It's like seeing an old friend when I'm out in the woods. And another one who saw one running across, running alongside as she was driving home um, a few months ago. I guess it was last year. So cougars are very much around, but they're very solitary animals. They don't like to be near large population centers. And so sometimes when cougars or mountain lions, they're also called, or pumas, they're also called, sometimes when they come into a neighborhood, a mountainous neighborhood, it's because a lot of their natural environment has already been encroached. Guess what? We have a wild turkey going in the backyard. Let me see if I can get him on video. Where are you, turkey? There he goes, walking through our yard. We might as well talk about wild turkeys since they're there. These animals are also native to my backyard. They love to, uh, they love to travel in flocks. You can't really see them very well. So there's a few over here. Kind of scaring them away. Come back here, turkey. There he is, poking out from behind the tree. They will eat any bird seed. So I have several neighbors who will put their bird feeders out and the wild turkeys will come and knock them over and eat all of the bird seed. Um, these guys live here in the mountain region where we live, in the Rocky Mountains. And there's a rumor, I haven't researched this for sure, but I heard once that our founding father, Benjamin Franklin, wanted to have the wild turkey as the national bird of the United States. And I could see why, they're beautiful birds, but they aren't particularly smart um, either. They often go across the road when we're trying to drive, and uh, they often get chased by my children. We'll see if any of them will gobble for us. Hey turkeys! I guess that's what we get, the best we get. Um, another favorite bird, the wild turkeys are always a favorite in our house because we get to see them. I kind of call them our backyard pets because they're animals that we get to see and interact with a little bit, but I don't have to take care of them. <laughs> they take care of themselves. They find their own food and I just get to be a guest in their neighborhood. It's kind of fun that way. The final two animals I wanted to share quickly are also birds that my, my children love. The first one is ruby-throated hummingbird. Where are you at? This one's ruby-throated hummingbird. We get these in our house a lot. You can hear them buzz by. Bzzz. It kind of sounds like a bee um, when they come by and they love to drink nectar. So you'll often see hummingbird feeders with bright red kind of floral looking um, a spout, I guess, and the hummingbirds like to drink the nectar right from there. So hummingbirds are also territorial, meaning they will come back year after year once they learn there's a good food source. So if you set up a hummingbird feeder in your yard and encourage them to come, once those birds find it, then you could have hummingbird visitors for the rest of time if you want. 
we have a neighbor who has some bird feeders up that um, some hummingbird feeders and it's always fun to see them flitting around and exploring and they'll stop and hover right in front of your face um, and they're really beautiful birds the final one I wanted to mention is my baby L's favorite it is a blue jay this stellar jay right here we see them on our on our porch a lot because they they love to come and explore they have a loud um, they have a loud caw but we don't hear we don't hear them complaining very much the reason my two-year-old loves the blue jay is because of a silly song called bad blue jay by Casper baby pants that we like to listen to um, and she will see a real blue jay and start singing that song just one of the fun things that we do sometimes in the morning so so you can tell I'm a big fan of nature and I hope you guys are too if you have a chance get out show some gratitude for nature you can check out all the resources at mountainmomandtots.com slash thankful for nature um, post a photo of what you're thankful for in nature and then if you do it by the 30th and tag mountain mom tots then you'll be entered to win a 1 in 50 exclusive gear giveaway from chaos headwear and love mother so i'm happy to be outdoors with you we'll see you in the outdoors Bye-bye.